Mm -hmm. Now, the program that I'm referencing, the sports metric program, just because it was one of the first and probably the largest, uh, is is a jogging forward, a jogging backward, a shuffling side to side, a lunging, a single leg heel raise, hopping, jumping, agility, and stretching. Mm -hmm. So you'll see a lot of times in some of these videos where they're highlighting this program that you'll see those knees kind of dropping down and inward on a drop jump type of a test. Yeah. And then they're correct, and they're correcting and 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 showing that video to the athlete and saying when we land, we want to avoid those knees coming down to the middle. Correct. What's wrong in that thought process? Well, I, I guess the my my next question was is how do you attack it? How do they attack it? Yeah. Because we 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 look at that and we know that that shape or that behavior is wrong, right? Mm -hmm. We use the word behavior a lot of times. So when 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 I see that. I know typically what happens is they'll band their knees and they'll say it's some kind of adduction strength or something like that. Like they, they, they not strong enough. They, 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 sometimes you may hear it could be core. It could be, it could be uh, glutes or something. We look at it as it's the behavior and the ankle collapses. So the knees have to go in because it's all connected chain. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to attack it at the knee level. I want to attack it at the ankle level, straight foot, inside ankle bone high. And you could start that process through ISO holds. Um, what, let me say this. The first part of our, our whole process is, is the assessment. The second part is, is we got to decompress the body, right? We got to make sure that those capsules, the hip capsule, we want to make sure that the knees, uh, you can't have tight quads or tight hamstrings and then me go change the way that you move because you may not have the length to do that. So those joints stay compressed, right? So you're still at risk or it could be how you got the injury in the first place. So I got to decompress the body, teach the body how to reload neurologically, proper loading, meaning foot placement, the position of the ankle, position of the knee, position of the chest, the head, everything. ISO that, build the strength back up in those positions because now not only are you building up the strength in those positions, but you're telling the brain that max neuro drive, we want to do it from this position, right? We want to go as hard as we can and be our most explosive with a straight foot and the inside ankle bone high. As you're doing that and you're repping these exercises out, then we'll start to, we'll move the athlete after that. There's phases to it to get them to neurologically reprogram. I'll never, never strap a knees unless I have a serious, serious shape issue. In other words, if you're familiar with P.D. Goscue's work, he has like the Goscue straps and things like that. So what I've done with his straps is, and I'm not saying it's exactly what he has, I'll take and I'll build, if I want to see like a bow type shape in a landing, meaning straight foot inside ankle bone high, the knee and the chest rotate out. All it is is that is in the landing the energy is moving into that bow. In other words, as my foot sets, if my knee is going out, that means the inside ankle bone is climbing high. As I'm doing that, my, my hip bone should be sitting about three to five degrees behind the chest, depending upon what phase of the sprint or jog or whatever we may be in. Each part of the, of the run needs to be broken down. The explosive movement needs to be broken down. The middle of it needs to be broken down. So there's, let's say that the, the, the tilt of the chest or the, in the dig phase, they'll call it in a sprint, is going to be real loud, right? Like the lean forward and stuff like that. But the upright running is going to be a little bit more of a quiet lean, but it's still hip driving chest. So no matter what happens when that foot lands straight and that inside ankle bone climbs high, the glute and hamstring have to load. Once it loads, it's almost like, like uh, the IT band is like a bow. So we pull the IT band and load it, boom, and then we release it. And there's, a, there's internal rotation of the femur, or, and then the, there's a rotation where you'll see the, the knee go in, the heel will go away, and it'll travel to the next step. And the, and the, and the spine is like a whip that kind of just brings this energy from one side to the other. Hear but the entire episode for free on iTunes, Spotify, other favorite podcast players, or go to mechanicalcareforum.com.